Well, we're still at the Great Western Steam Up at the Nevada State Railroad Museum, Carson City. Right. And it's been an enormous amount of fun. We've done a whole bunch of shows so far on this. And if you want to see those, at the very end of this video, there will be a link to a playlist of all of the videos from the Great Western Steam Up. Won't that be fun? So if you want to look at all this other fun and wonderful stuff, and you do. Of course. Of course. <laughs> then just at the very end of this video, look for that link. Uh, there's also a subscribe button right there. But uh, the, the link to all of the other Great Western Steam Up videos is right there at the end of this film. Or video, I guess. Yes, yeah, so the film's out. <laughs> So this week we're just looking at one locomotive. Oh, Southern Pacific 18. I see. It's a, uh, it's a uh, well, it's a fascinating uh, engine with a long and illustrious history on one of the very popular narrow gauge uh, railroads, the Southern Pacific narrow gauge. Oh, neat. Southern Pacific is better known as a standard gauge, big, massive, Class A railroad but it had several different uh, narrow gauge lines. Right. Including this one, um, which has often been referred to as the Slim Princess. Oh, how fun, that's really cool. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So originally the railroad was called Carson and Colorado. And I used to find that confusing because it didn't go anywhere near Colorado, but they were referring to the Colorado River. Oh. They were gonna go from Carson City to the Colorado River, which they never did. No. But a lot of railroads had great ambitions about <laughs> great aspirations of the Colorado River. What they did go is is they they went to Owens Valley oh. in California. And that's kind of as far as they ever go. Now, the other really interesting thing is it's actually the Virginia and Truckee. Oh. So everybody's favorite line, the Virginia and Truckee, uh, when they decided to build this branch line down into California, they decided to build it as a narrow gauge line. So here's the map. You can see that it leaves from almost Carson City. It leaves from Mound House. Oh which is just outside of Carson City. Right. And then it runs out into the desert past Walker Lake. Oh my. That's a really strange place. The, the lake just keeps receding and receding. Huh. <laughs> I wonder where it is now. Yeah, it may, it may dry up like the Great Salt Lake is trying yeah, to do. Yeah, it's all drying up. Anyway, uh, typical of the Virginia and Truckee, it was also a really, really elegant railroad. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. Anyway, the railroad operated for uh, 20 years, as I recall, as the Carson and Colorado. And then right around 1900, they decided it was just more trouble than it was worth. Yeah. And they sold it to the Southern Pacific. Oh, I see. This is a neat picture. This is the first train to cross uh, into California from Nevada. This is Laws. And Laws is just barely, barely outside Bishop. And Bishop is really, when you get right down to it, just barely, barely outside Yosemite National Park. That's just quite the transition zone right there. <laughs> the far end of this is at Owens Lake in oh. Owens Valley. Okay. Uh, famous because Southern uh, California tapped that water and took it down to Los Angeles, mm. kind of leaving this place without any water. Uh, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. This is neat. Here is number 18, the locomotive that, that's there at the steam up, parked next to an SP standard gauge. Isn't that an amazing size difference? Well, when you see it like that. Oh. And here's a, a similar engine to 18. This is number nine. Just again, out in the desert there in Nevada. But just like the Virginia and Truckee, this railroad became just really popular and highly photographed. This is Lucius Beebe and Charles Clegg's private car, famous railroad photographers from around 1940. I could live in that car. 
Look at this. This is the turntable at Laws. Oh, wow. Now, does that look sort of familiar? Well, the whole area looks familiar to me, but I came from an area just about like that. <laughs> it does look like your hometown there, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. This is the, the turntable that they duplicated at the museum. Oh. That we did the show on. Oh, neat. So, uh, a little different because this is a narrow gauge turntable, a narrow gauge A frame gallows turntable, where the one at the museum is dual gauge. Oh. But the, the volunteer group that, that's trying to restore laws, they're doing a lot of work out at laws, has completely rebuilt the turntable and it's working again. They've relayed around a thousand feet of track, but the big thing is they've restored number 18. So this is sort of fascinating. Here's number 18, the locomotive that they've restored at Laws, pulling onto a reproduction of the turntable at Laws. Oh my goodness. In Carson City. <laughs> I would almost say that's the same turntable. It's, it's identical. It's just the only difference is that the other one is strictly narrow gauge. This has the added rails just to the outside of that. So they can also turn very small uh, standard gauge engines on here. Right. But works exactly like the one at Laws. It's a, it's a gallows turntable with uh, all of the weight carried at the center of the turntable. We did that whole show on that. But anyway, that's fascinating. This is this is the the uh, Southern Pacific engine turning on the Southern Pacific turntable, but in a different town. <laughs> <laughs> So here again is the uh, turntable at Laws when it was the SP narrow gauge, the Slim Princess. Just like the Virginian Truckee, this uh, railroad continued to operate until the 1960s. Actually, 1961, oh. as I recall, is when the whole thing was abandoned and the rails taken up and so on. As this railroad was intended to be a continuation of the Virginia and Truckee, it, uh, it connected with the Virginia and Truckee at Mount House, meaning that all of the, the uh, freight, the gold and silver mineral and that sort of thing that was being brought up from Tonopah and uh, Gold Hill and so on, had to be transferred over to standard gauge cars 
at Mound House. Oh, I see. Huh. And it was such a pain. Uh, also, they were giving money to the Virginia and Truckee for no particular reason. So the Southern Pacific built their own continuation of this line uh, up to the Southern Pacific uh, main line. Anyway, a lot of the railroad survived here at Laws. And as we were saying, it's it's been restored and rebuilt. Uh, the locomotive was on display in the park at Independence, oh. which isn't far from there. And so they were able to pull number 18 out of the park where it had be been beached since 1960 and take that to Laws and restore that as well. Oh, that's awesome. And then, like I say, they've laid about a thousand feet of track. Well, there you go. And so they were putting this whole thing back and forth and they've got a couple of pieces of rolling stock. Uh, we need to get out to Laws. Absolutely. They might want to <laughs> patch that water tower, though. <laughs> anyway, because they only have a thousand feet of track, uh, they loaned number 18 to the Durango and Silverton. And the Durango and Silverton was very fascinated about getting a hold of uh, an oil burning engine because after the fires and all the controversy and everything, uh, Durango Silverton has considered mostly converting over to oil burning and so they wanted to bring in an oil burning locomotive uh, just to see what the logistics of that would be. Mm. So this engine's been operating at the Durango Silverton until it got sent to the show here. Well that's neat. <laughs> We've just about uh, used up all of our footage from the show. Oh, and it's been such a... What a wonderful memory. What a wonderful... Oh. We have one more locomotive to show. Right. And so we'll have a, another another show on that. And then we're pretty much going to be moving on from the Great Western Steam Up. <laughs> there you go. To something else. Oh, yeah. There's always something else. <laughs> always something else. Now, if you've been over to the uh, the channel page, you may have noticed that we've rolled out... Um, memberships right and so if you want to financially support the channel you can sign up to be a member right or if you're not a subscriber for absolutely no money whatsoever you can click on the uh, subscribe button right. and become a subscriber anyway just to get over to the channel page where you can do either or click on the upcoming blue button right there there it is well we're not sure how you found this fun and informative video on the internet we hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here on tuesday right because we're working on the garden rail oh we sure are <laughs>